no matter who we pick in this matchup, there is a very real shot for Detroit in this game, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't feel like this is a runaway game, even though I'm sure San Francisco is going to be favored. It's at home. I think this Niners team, especially if there's no Debo, is vulnerable. 100%. Um, so I, I, what do you, what do you, let's, let's just, what do you think about this, this matchup as a whole? So, Originally, when you first look at it, you think, oh, Lions, Niners, like, Niners got this. Like, they're, they're going to beat the Lions. The Lions had a good season. It's it's the Niners got this. When I really look deep into this matchup, it's very, very interesting because the Lions could 100% win this game. Like, mm-hmm. if you think about it, Jared Goff, honestly, Jared Goff is better when he's at home. There's no pressure. He's in a dome controlled environment. Like, he honestly looks great when he's in that type of environment. It is going to be on the road. Mm-hmm. But that offensive line is playing so great that like they can be able to like not allow pressure into Jared Goff. Like, I believe against the Packers, I don't think the Niners got a sack in that game. So it's like they can hold up as far as that offensive line keeping him, you know, upright and not allowing a lot of pressure. Then we look on the defensive side of the ball. I think that I mean obviously the lines on the back end is very very soft. Like you can like big plays, they're susceptible to big plays like badly. But they're an elite run-stopping defense. Like, they do not give stuff up on the ground for the most part. Um, and I feel like, I mean, you're never going to slow down Christian McCaffrey. But if it's one, if, if you tell me, listen, you could allow the the allow Brock Perry to beat you or CMC to, you know, gash you on the run game, I'd rather stop CMC and just have Brock Perry try to beat you through the air. 100%. So that kind, of, that kind of plays into the Lions defense. So with the, that formula on both sides of the ball, keeping Jared Goff upright, not allowing a lot of pressure, and then slowing down the Niners' run game. That Right there, I already feel like that's a recipe for them to upset the 49ers. So I feel like those are – I'm saying those are my two biggest keys as far as the Lions winning this game. Even then, it, it, bro, it's, it's just so tough, bro. It's so tough. Because honestly, with both quarterbacks, I feel like I don't know what I'm getting 100%. Like when we talked about the previous matchup with Lamar and Mahomes, I feel like regardless, I'm getting their A game from both of those guys. Jared Goff on the road. No, I, I can't say I'm 100% certain that he's going to play great, even though he's been playing well. I can't say that. Both the two games that he just played was at home, controlled environment, no pressure. Then Brock Purdy, it's like that he had a secondary sweep, but it's like they do have a good pass rush. Aiden Hutchinson's mm-hmm. been playing very well. If they can slow down the CMC, it's like, all right, now everything's on your shoulders. I don't know if I can 100% trust him to you know win me this game. So from that aspect – it's a tough, like I said, I could see it going both ways. I lean, I I lean the Niners. I really do. Mm-hmm. My heart wants the Lions to win, though. I'm be honest. My heart <laughs> definitely wants the Lions to win. But if I'm just mm-hmm. thinking with my head, I lean the 49ers just because at the end of the day, they do have an all-star team. They have talent all around the board. Now, if Debo doesn't play, that does make things a little bit tough. I'm gonna be honest. Right. But at the end of the day, like I said, the key for the Lions to me would have to be slowing down CMC. They do have an elite run defense, but at the end of the day, that's the best running back in the league. Like he he puts in work against pretty much everybody. So I, I think I'm leaning the 49ers in this one. I'm gonna piggyback off what you said, because I, I agree with a lot of it. Um Brock Purdy, I think I have it pulled up here. He threw for the fifth most yards off of play actions this year, 969. Um, and was uh, this looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth in play action attempts. Um, and that goes back to like we talked about in the past with the Shanahan offense. So much of why it's so effective is because so much of the pass game is married with the run game. They cut out, they get so many different looks out of the exact same sets and motions. And when you play action off of that, it gets very, very difficult to know what's coming at you at a defense. And before you know it, George Kittle is running an over route wide open for 35 right. yards. And he's about to get some yak up off of that, truck somebody, step on somebody. And now, mm-hmm. now he's got a 70-yard touchdown. So, <laughs> like you said, with the Lions having one of the most stout run defenses, one of the key matchup in this game is first down. Facts. If you can get Facts. this Niners team behind the sticks – and force into a position where you are not super concerned about the play action. There is a 
chance, like I said, the, the opportunity for Detroit to be able to win this game is very real because that is something that they can do. I think they were the second or third best run defense um, in terms of yardage. Second best run defense in terms of yardage. Third in terms of yards per carry um, in the regular season. So they're able to consistently be able to get the Niners behind the change. They'll be able to get some decent stops, put the ball in Jared Goff's hands, get the playmakers involved. You get Gibbs going, get the ball, ball to Amon Ra, um, get Sam Laporta going. Um, for what it's worth, one of these quarterbacks has, has won a conference championship game before. Jared true. Goff's been to a Super Bowl. That's true. Um, so he – Again, and like one's said, coming off a good game, one's coughing, coming off a really bad game, even though they won. Yeah, let's be and let's call a spade a spade. One's coming off of a game they should have they should have lost. That's facts. Because of that, because of that, that person, game. right? They should have lost that game. the The 49ers are very very fortunate that that is a young and inexperienced Packers team <laughs> who did not capitalize on a lot of mistakes, and some of them them <laughs> some of them defenders got pants for hands. Facts. Because one or two of those things go differently. Again, I'm not going to live in hindsight. It happens. It happens. The Niners were the better team. They won the game. But one or two of those things go differently. We might be looking at an NFC Championship game in Detroit <laughs> with the Packers and the Lions. And we were very close to do it if Jordan Love ain't channel his inner Brett, Brett Favre on throw. Yeah. Cross body. I still can't believe that throw, man. It, that was like uh... – Bro, even that though was, was Packers deflating fan. to watch, uh, bro. I was like, "What?" I like, I was rooting for him so much. I'm like, "Bro, there's no way." And I'm looking back at it. I'm like, "The the decision, the throw, like there was no reason to make that throw at all. Zero. It was, it was just nothing. I can't even. You can't play devil's advocate with that throw. It was just nothing. Just he was away. better off literally just falling down. Like, bro, it was first down. It was first right. or second down. One or two. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? Just but, unnecessary. Yeah, it was uh, just in, inexperienced there. But yeah, going back to my again initial point, like I said, the, the key matchup is really going to be Niners offense, the Lions defense, early downs, first and second down. Can you get this offense in a point where it's third and long versus third and medium or third and short, where the opportunity to run is there, or even just the threat of a run is there? Um, because those I think are two different offenses. And like you said, you forget critique of Brock Purdy and whether you think he's a game manager, how good you think he is as a quarterback talent wise, whatever. If you even remove that, CMC is too much of a lethal weapon. Like mm -hmm. regardless right. of who their quarterback is, which is why he's just got, you know, put up as a finalist for in the top five for MVP voting before that comes out in the next couple of weeks. Um, you want it to be a game where you you're you're putting the ball in whoever that quarterback's is quarterback's hands is not a game where CMC can really start to lean on you. He's getting five, six, seven yards of carry. You're not winning that football game if that no. happens. So you got to get them behind the chains. It's crazy to say, but like you have to force if CMC is going to beat you, you have to force it in the passing game. Mm -hmm. Cannot come in the run game. Um, so you got to put the ball in Brock's hands. So. That is what I think is really going to come down to. If I have to lean one way, again, just like you, I, I'm going to pick the Niners in this one just off of, of sheer talent. Um, and the defense is still – it's unbelievable. We've seen Jared Goff against, in certain moments. He has not showed up in the best way. Um, and one or two big plays by this Niners defense – it's just – it's going to be tough. It's going to be deflating. They're at home. Um, it, it's a lot for the Lions to be able to overcome. And with their current core that they have now, I, I'm not sure that they're going to be able to do it if I have to pick. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean I don't think it can happen again. I think it's going to be a tight game. But if I have to pick, I'm going to take the Niners in this one. Um, but, again, I think it's going to be a relatively tight game. I think it's going to be hard fought on both sides. Uh, the trenches is going to be oof, on both sides of the ball. Facts. Both sides of the ball are going to be getting after it. Um, I'm excited to see Panay Suo go up against Bosa or Chase Young, whoever they're throwing out there on the edge. That's going to be a very, very excited matchup. Another key matchup, that right side of the O-line, um, having Panay out there, being able to kind of stop 
um, some of the edge rushers that the Niners have. Um, and then vice versa, we talked about this line's pass rush. Aiden Hutchinson has been having it going. Um, obviously, he's probably going to see a healthy do dose of Trent Williams at times. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited for both of these championship games. They're going to be a very, very good weekend of football. 100%. Another big thing, too, I feel like that's going to play a key factor in this game. Who comes out hotter? Like, who starts off the game better? Because if the Lions start out, say they 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 take the ball, they get an opening score, or say they go up 10 nothing, something like that, then it's all – the run defense is already good, but then you're already kind of playing catch-up, so you're not running as much, and then it kind of, mm -hmm. like, eliminates the run game to an extent. But the same thing could be said for the 49ers. If the 49ers come out, they come out strong – then it's like, all right, they're at home. Now the pressure's on Jerry Goff on the road. Now they they can kind of pin their ears back and go for the pass rush. So I feel like a big thing is going to be whoever comes out stronger from the start of the game. So first downs as well, but also just who's going to come out stronger at starting the game. Mm -hmm.